at the trailhead for the Brownsville Trail in West Windsor, Vermont. Uh, this morning we're going to do a little exploring on the Brownsville Trail. Let's take a hike. Okay, so the initial part of this trail from the parking lot spills out onto this quarry road uh, which was used to transport granite from the quarry to Windsor. So we're going to take this road probably for about a half a mile and then we're going to cut straight up into the woods at the face of the quarry. We'll see you there. If you were actually to do this hike, it would take you probably an hour from the parking lot and back. Uh, it's not a long hike, but it's very interesting to explore some of these caves and some of these granite outcroppings here on the Brownsville Trail. So let's continue. Bentley, come on. Come on, wait for me. So we've arrived at one of the more beautiful locations here on the Brownsville Trail. These ice falls, uh, beautiful uh, in the winter time, but actually more beautiful this time of year when they're frozen with no snow around them so that you can actually see their profile. Let's take a closer look. And if we had extra time today, we could probably hike up to the top of it and take a look at its source. But that's not our focus today, so let's continue. So as I mentioned before, one of the purposes of this hike was to explore some of the granite outcroppings here on the Brownsville Trail. Let's take a closer look at some of the caves and formations up here as we leave the Brownsville Trail and make our way straight up. part here is finding a finding a way through these rock formations. It looks like there's a little chute right here. We're gonna attempt to get through there. Let's go. Let's go buddy. Okay. Looks like Bentley found a way through here. Sometimes the best thing to do is bring a dog with you. They always need, they always seem to know the right way. Okay, Bentley, where are we gonna go now? Come on. There's all kinds of interesting crevices here in the rocks and ice formations. So let's follow Bentley. One of the remarkable things is how trees of this magnitude can grow along these rock ledges. So here's a tree that sort of lost its grip and, and slid down the hill and I can see why there's not much of a substrate to hold it on. 
So here we are in this boulder field here. Looks to make ideal dens for things like small animals, bobcats, porcupines, things of that nature. So let's continue because we're heading over there. So these natural rock outcroppings and formations were just the thing that the geologists were looking for in the early part of the uh, 20th century as they mined quarry here in Mount Scotty. Uh, this baby's pretty big. I don't know how much it weighs, but it's, it must be heavy. So let's see if we can find our way up to the top of this. Drop a tarp from here, make an ideal shelter for the night. Okay, Bentley, how do we get up? You lead the way. Come on, let's go. Oh, looks like Bentley found himself a little cave here. Nice little overhang. It's reminiscent of the Anasazi in New Mexico, the cave dwellers. And I remember sitting in a cave very similar to this. There. Makes an ideal shelter. Uh, drop a tarp here in front. Warm. Pine boughs on the floor. You'd be all set for the night. Let's take a hike up to the top of this outcropping. Okay, so possibly the best way up here is to see this little here. And we'll just try to make our way up to that platform up here. Sometimes you never know what you're going to find here. I just pulled this rusty paint can out of the, uh, out of the, out of the soil here. Probably used at one time as a, to mark the trails. Uh, or, who knows, uh, mark boundary lines, I don't know. It looks like Bentley's found himself a little way up here, under that platform there. Let's see if we can do the same. So this is the outcropping I was talking about. I actually found some deer scat on here the other day. And from here, you get a nice view of the valley floor. And I guess if a deer was standing here, he would be able to see, or she would be able to see, any predators that happen to come along, protected by the back wall here.
Okay, so we're going to make our way back down here to the other side of this boulder face here. It's a little tricky holding a camera and doing this at the same time. I guess that's what all that climbing around on rocks did as a kid to prepare me for this. So we're going to go right up through the chute and end up somewhere up on top of that rock, possibly over here. Maybe Bentley will lead the way for us. Y'all set, buddy? Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Bentley. Find the way for me. Come on, buddy. Come on. Find the way for me. Come on. Good boy. So you can see where uh, some of the ferns have been worn down up here, trampled upon. Uh, they're not as lush as these are in this location, which probably means deer have been up here, and I can tell that because of the deer scat. Uh, you can actually see paths through here, and one of the paths you can see is the one we just came up, that little chute. You can actually see that path right here goes over to where Bentley's standing right here. So deer could uh, make a passage from up above down across the tops of these rocks and down through that chute quite easily as Bentley is illustrating. Come on Bentley, come on, jump over here bud. Come on, come on, you can make it, you can make it, come on, you can make it, come on, come on, come on, come on, you can make it, come on, come on. Where are you going buddy? Come on, come on buddy. Come on, jump, come on, come on. Good boy, there you go, you made it, there you go, you can make it, come on. Good boy, good boy. Okay, that deserves a treat. That deserves a treat for you. Yeah, good boy. So the top surface of this rock is probably about 20 by 40, I would say. And not that it provides a lot of cover, but it probably provides some safety from predators. So as you can see, we get some nice views from here, this location. Looking toward uh, Brownsville, Vermont, over here. So we hope you've enjoyed our little hike today up the face of this uh, old quarry here in uh, West Windsor or Brownsville, Vermont, right off the Brownsville Trail. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Let's head back down, okay? Come on. Careful, buddy. Okay, now I've never seen the quarry from this perspective before. We're just looking at the Brownsville Trail as it approaches the, uh, the uh, quarry. Or I should say the bottom of the quarry.
Oh, I don't think we're gonna be going that way, Bentley. Bentley, you know what? I'm gonna have to choose a different way. Come on, Bentley, over here. Come on over here, buddy. Come on. You're gonna slide right down there. So that's what we were trying to get down before. And right below us is the uh, Brownsville Trail as it approaches the quarry. Okay, so we found our way to the top of the quarry. Actually, the top of the quarry is where we just came from, but this is actually where the mining operation took place and where the quarry stone was actually loaded on the ox carts. You can see the remnants here. Uh, things like the cable for the derrick, it's right here. The braided steel cable, probably left over from about a hundred years ago. In its heyday, the Norcross Granite Quarry, one of four quarries on Mount Escutney, was the most extensive. Though it operated for several years until about 1923, neither present memory or past record provide much detail. Features of the quarry which can still be seen to this day include enormous derrick booms constructed of ponderosa pine, a web of rusty cable used to move them, and an endless amount of waste rock known as grout. In present day, the Brownsville Trail passes between the quarry face and the grout pile. Over the years, thousands of these holes, as pictured here, were drilled either by hand or by a steam drill in an attempt to break the hard granite into slabs so that they could be transported down the mountainside. In his book, Building Stones and Clay Products, a handbook for architects, first published in 1912, Heinrich Reis, then professor of economic geology at Cornell University, referred to a Scutney granite in this way. It is of dark olive green color and medium texture. The stone takes a high polish and shows excellent contrast between the polished and hammered surface. Indeed, it is one of the handsomest granites quarried in the United States. Once again, thanks for joining us, me and Bentley, here on the Brownsville Trail in West Windsor, Vermont. It's Saturday, November 29th. We'll see you again. Thanks.